Welcome on in here to Gold Sheet TV. We've been doing all kinds of NFL previews, but today I have one of the best in the biz to talk a little college football action with me. It's Matt Josephs, and uh, this show is going to be jam-packed. We're going to be talking some national title odds, some Heisman Trophy, some conference championship looks, and Matt's going to peel back the curtain and let you know just how he got so damn good at betting college football over his three-year stint here with SportsMemo.com. So, uh, Matt, I say we get right into it, man, because we have a lot to cover here today. And I guess let's just start, uh, you know, with an overview. You know, your record speaks for itself. Uh, again, you know, the proof is in the pudding, and no one has been better than you in college football. And that's not just in mid-majors, your namesake. So I'm wondering, man, like, how did you really corner in on, on a market that's uh, that's that's pretty well bet? So it's not like you know it's a low volume market. Uh, so I'm just wondering how how year over year you're able to have the results that you do. Yeah, I think it's something that I've kind of learned as I've gone along in this industry in that um, you want to kind of reduce the amount of variables in your bet. Uh, you know, when you bet a, a standard game, you're asking both teams, you're asking the offenses and defenses on both teams to basically perform the way you predicted before the game began. And that's, you know, more often than not, if you put in the research, it's going to happen. I feel like in college football, you don't see as many massive upsets. Of course, you see Appalachian State over Michigan many years ago. You see some of the other upsets that have occurred heard but I kind of learned as I've gone along in this industry to kind of reduce the amount of variables and so for one of the things I like to do when it comes to college football I play a lot of team totals uh, basically mm -hmm. I'm asking one offense to outperform one defense I don't care what the other team does for the most part as long as they you know go three and out as quick as I can so my team can get the ball back or drain a lot of clock so my unders uh, can hit so I've basically done and I was looking over like at least half of my plays are team totals because I just feel like it's a market wow. that you can certainly exploit there's key numbers you know obviously you know 14 21 17 are key numbers in, in football no matter what level it is. So when a book offers a 13 and a half or a 16 and a half or a 20 and a half, you kind of look and see if it if it applies to your over or your under. One of the other things I like to kind of do is kind of reduce the uh, the game stuff too. I like to look at first quarter plays. I like to look at first half plays. I like to look at occasionally maybe a second half type of play. Do I think a team is better in the second half than they are in the first half? One of my favorite little systems, and I don't necessarily have all the, the numbers for it, but I like playing first quarter unders involving the academies. And certainly in the games that involve the academies you get really low totals but you play that first quarter because here's how it goes in theory your academy team gets the ball they go on like a six or seven minute drive they kill a lot of the clock if they kick a field goal doesn't leave a lot of uh, time for the other team in that first quarter and if your defense is good enough which in the past army's defense has been good enough so they've been one i've used this with an air force as well then they play defense and and in theory will uh, hold up and then the other team gets the ball back and then they go on another time consuming drive so I'll be very interested to see that first week of the season. Navy and Notre Dame, when they play that game overseas, the first quarter number hasn't come out yet. But I'll be interested, potentially. Navy's got a legit defense this year. Uh, their quarterback situation isn't necessarily the greatest, and Notre Dame's defense isn't bad. Usually when you have a lot of time to prepare for the triple option, you do pretty well against it. I'll be interested to see what this first quarter number is in the Navy-Notre Dame game, because if, if it is a good one, I'm looking at the under. Yeah, and it's like everybody already knows about that Army-Navy game under trend. I know last year it kind of got uh, broken up because of that overtime period. But, uh, yeah, I love that, you know, using that same thought process to find a market that not as many people are looking into, and that's those first quarter academy unders. And, and that's the thing is uh, a lot of people, they get caught in with, game long, you know, the, the the old standard sides and totals. And it's something that you guys have done on Prop It Up as well, showing you you can build a bankroll betting some of these lower bet markets and you're going to find better numbers and better spots because of it. A lot of the numbers you'll see in that are just formula driven as well. And as Matt was talking there, you saw some different screenshots that we have from the gold sheet. The football gold sheet is going to be released in just a few weeks, two weeks to the day, and that's August 20th. 22nd and right now you can get the entire season we have early bird pricing up for just the cost of six individual weeks and that's not just college football that's not just nfl that's both of them you'll get college football week zero through the super bowl check that out i mean one of the best deals and if you like sounding smarter than your buddies Man, having the gold sheet is a terrific way to do that because it's not just plays telling you what to get. 
you're armed with all this kind of information like great handicappers with Matt Joseph's uh, come up with, you know, in, in their in their processes that they have as well. So one thing that everybody likes to sound smarter than their buddies with Matt is I already know who's going to win the national title. Now, it's not a market that I love. I've talked with this uh, with Eric is I don't really play many futures unless there's a lot of zeros on the back end of it unless it makes sense for me to tie up my bankroll for a couple months to get a nice long shot home i don't really bet much of these markets so i'm wondering i guess the first question is do you dive into these markets and if you do uh, i guess what's your kind of philosophy behind betting uh, something like trying to find out who's going to win the national title no, it's exactly the same thing that you just said, basically. And, and you look at the odds there, and, and it's the expected teams or the favorites. And really, it comes mm-hmm. down to, and this is something that we talk about a lot, first off, having multiple options. Let's say you do like Georgia, and you think they're going to win the national championship. Well, they're going to be a favorite in every book. And so if you have multiple options, yep. you can find some sense difference. Obviously, the plus 215 here, uh, let's say BetMGM has plus 300, or FanDuel has plus 325. So you want to give yourself some options. But much like you, when I look for these long season uh, props, um, I kind of want to find an underdog. I kind of want to find a team that um, you know is 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 going to come off the you know uh, come off the radar. Uh, you know, we'll talk about the Heisman Trophy, and, and I've talked about it on the show before. There's a guy that I sprinkle a little bit on. I know he's probably not going to win, but I still think it's a fun bet. Fun bet. You look at the the numbers down the line here when it comes to this. I mean, Texas maybe has a shot, but you're asking Texas, a team that's traditionally, you know, struggled as of late to have a winning tradition at 22 to one to basically go through Georgia and Alabama and Ohio State and Michigan. And maybe Ohio State and Michigan both don't make it. Um, Maybe Georgia and Alabama don't both make it. Uh, So it's it's a market that I don't like to dabble in very much. You continue down, you look at LSU, they're okay. I mean, they're, I mean, obviously they're good, but like they also have to go through Georgia and Alabama potentially. Uh, USC, I mean, it's the Pac-12. We rarely see a lot of great things from the Pac-12. Occasionally the conference does step up, but it's just a market that if I can't find a sleeper that I can attach to, I'm just not going to play it. And this is one of those markets where you can't really do it. Yeah, and Matt, I know that this wasn't something we planned to bring up, but I'm just wondering as far as this market stands, do you think it'll be easier to find some longer odds teams to get home when the format does change, when it goes to the 12-team playoff format? Or um, are we just going to be looking at uh, you know the, the SEC teams just now getting a first round and second round by potentially uh, once, uh, once, once the new format comes around? I'm just wondering, uh, you know, moving forward, how you see that breaking out. I mean, in theory, there is more upset potential because you're adding another game potentially to some of these yeah. favorites, but there's a reason why they are the one seed or the two seed. They're just that much better. You could have added the past couple of years, you could have made a 68 team tournament and we still would have gotten to Georgia and TCU most likely and, and, and all the That's previous true. champions. So like the best teams are just going to keep getting there. You might have, maybe you have one, two, three, and five get in the final four instead of one, two, three, and four. But for the most part, college football, the top team almost always get to the championship game yeah i I love that breakdown for sure man something that that i kind of thought as well when they expanded the field it was like great uh okay um let's uh see how much difference uh this makes probably none um all right let's swing it to heisman trophy matt and uh apparently uh if you if you ask most of the talking heads uh caleb williams at usc already won the award so um what why why are we talking about it now uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, and that, this is another one of those markets where you look towards the top and you try and find it. And this is also one of those markets that if you have a bunch of different options, you might see some differences in sense. As you look at the DraftKings one, uh, Caleb Williams is plus 550 to win the Heisman Trophy, and he is the best quarterback in college football. Uh, and obviously, quarterback is the key word. As you look at the list, I mean, most of the guys uh, you will see are quarterbacks. There's occasionally a wide receiver up there. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the highest non-quarterback that's currently listed. He's 20 to one on DraftKings. Um, So that's the kind of key here. And really it comes down to this. Who do you think is going to win the national championship and who's going to be the reason why they win the national championship? Now, obviously Mm -hmm. uh, USC probably not going to win, but Caleb Williams is going to have really good numbers. Now I I gave out Taylor Green. He lost one of his wide receivers already. That's a little bit of a concern, but I still think Taylor Green is going to do all right. He was 500 to one when I got it. It's not going to win. That's why I put like a fifth of a unit, a very little amount just to have a little fun. Uh, if you look for like a potential sleeper here, 
Kyle McCord at, at Ohio State is 25 to 1. I hate Ohio State. I, I, I lean more towards the Michigan side of things when it comes to that rivalry. But I mean, Kyle McCord is the best wide receiving core in America. Marvin Harrison Jr., who's listed above him at 20 to 1, uh, he's got several other guys who are really good. Uh, if you think Ohio State is going to make the championship game, if you think they're going to make the Final Four, I think Kyle McCord at 25 to 1 is not a bad bet. Um, obviously, you know, Drake May is up there. Michael Penix Jr. from Washington is going to have a great season season but is Washington going to have a great season so you kind of when you handicap Heisman you're trying to figure out who those final four teams are why they got there and who's going to be the reason that they do it you know Caleb Williams is the favorite he's the best quarterback in the league I'd maybe take a look at Kyle McCord at 25 to 1 if you think Ohio State is going to do some big things this year with their great wide receiving core yeah and and if it was a fingernail painting award i would say give caleb williams the trophy right now you know but on or uh, yeah caleb caleb williams give it to him man i mean he's got the best painted nails that we've ever seen in football but you have to play the entire season instead of that so uh so yeah I, i love the breakdown and again i think trying to find these futures often is i liken it to trying to find a needle in a haystack and you sound great when you get it home However, it's just not the way that I typically bet it. So I I sometimes will look more for things that I feel like I can handicap a little bit better. And that's going back to what you said is ISOing in on teams, ISOing in on conferences specifically. So as far as conference championship futures go, uh, is that something you bet much? And if you do, how do you try and find value in that marketplace? So once again, this is another one of those things where I'm trying to find a team that's coming from the outside of the pack. I'm just, you're not going to see me on these shows come on and be like, well, I think, uh, you know, Georgia is going to win the SEC because that's just not, A, it's not fun, and B, it's just not, (laughs) it's not what I'm going to do. So my strategy when it comes to these conference bets is I put sprinkles on them. And whatever that is for you, whether it's a quarter of a unit, whether it's a third of a unit, a fifth of a unit, whatever it is. Basically, my goal is to hit one or two of them and make a profit based off the rest of them. And and I understand some people are like, well, wait a second, when you just want to place your bets on the best things and try and win money. And yes, that's my goal. Ultimately, like I do the research and I think these things have a chance at winning. But if they go 0 and 5 or 0 and 4, whatever, um, then I'm not going to you know, cry too much because I didn't use too much of my bankroll. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You don't want to do that before the season. That's that's one of the keys here. Let's say you have a bankroll of 100 units. I would say on futures, you put like three or four units down uh, a total, whether it's Heisman, whether it's national championship, whether it's mm-hmm. conference championship, win toes, which we'll get to. I, I just don't use a lot of my bankroll. You know, for example, I'll, I'll give you and I'm going to pat myself on the back a little bit here, but I did a lot of uh, baseball futures. Uh, I did a lot of baseball futures this offseason. I put a bunch of little ones down. A lot of them aren't doing well, but the key is I have a Luisa rise at 20 to one to have the most hits in baseball. He's obviously ahead right now. Bad. And I have Shohei at 20 to one to be the home run King. Now his lead is shrinking. Um, if I hit one or even both of those, then all the other losses become the whole thing becomes a profit based off the futures. So that's my goal, taking little shots, little dart throws at some of these things and hoping to hit a couple of them. So that was a long way to get to this. So one of my favorite longer shots And once again, you kind of want to make sure to shop around a little bit because you want to get the best price. And this was by far the best price. Um, I have the Pitt Panthers to make the ACC title game. That's not win the ACC title game. Mm -hmm. That's make the ACC title game at 12 to 1 on BetMGM. 12 to 1, I believe if you look on DraftKings right now, I think it's like 8 to 1, maybe 7 to 1. Um, I think that Pittsburgh has a shot for several reasons. First off, Pat Narduzzi's done a very good job with Pittsburgh. His offense is going to be very good this year. They bring over Boston College's quarterback who struggled behind a terrible offensive line in BC. He's reunited with his old offensive coordinator. I think their offense is going to be great. Their defense lost a lot to the NFL, a lot to the NFL. But Pat Narduzzi's a defensive coach, and I think he can fix things a little bit there. They do not play Miami. They do not play Clemson. They get Florida State and North Carolina at home, traditionally a place that Pittsburgh plays really well. Um, Their toughest road trip is at Wake or at Duke, so that could be a little bit of an issue, but I don't think anybody's going undefeated in the ACC. So when you look and try and decide on which one of these you want to potentially do, you take a look at schedules. 
how many of the uh, of the, the the best schools are you missing? How many of them do you get at home? Are there any scheduling spots that may benefit you? Let's say the league favorite has a really large game the week before they play you, so there could be a letdown spot. You kind of want to make sure to look at the scheduling spots. And then, of course, you want to look at the coaches. You want to look at the team itself. But I think schedule is just as important. The other one I kind of like that's a little bit longer odds San Jose State to make the uh, Mountain West Championship game. That's make the championship game at plus 550 on DraftKings. San Jose State has a really good offense. The Cordero kid at quarterback is really good. Uh, He's got a lot of his pieces back on offense. Now, the reason why these odds aren't bigger is because the defense lost all of their good players uh, on the defensive line. Their defensive line was so good. It got a lot of pressure and basically saved the rest of the defense. So they've got to replace all those guys. San Jose State hosts San Diego State. They host Fresno State. They host Air Force. They play at Boise State. So that's only one really tough road game of the top of that conference. So I like the scheduling spot. I like the offense. So San Jose State to make the Mountain West title game was also on my card. Don't forget their sprinkles. If they all lose, oh, well, we lost a couple units in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't matter. But I like Mm -hmm. San Jose State and Pittsburgh to make their respective conference title games. Well, and I also really like the piece that you had in there too, just regarding, you know, being able to make a potential profit on these and also being able to assuage maybe some other spots that you took some shots at. And when you're you're making that distinguish of it to make the title game, uh, if Pitt comes out to a great start to the season and then, you know, it's starting to get close to ACC title time, you have a much better chance at guaranteeing with a 12 to 1 ticket, you're going to have some form of profit. Because let's say Pitt has a great season, they end up with favorites in a game that's going to decide which team is going to be making the ACC title game. Or you see a dog that really could potentially get home as well and, and maybe usurp Pitt and not get them in. So with a 12 to 1 ticket just to make, not to win, you're not pigeonholing yourself into, well, I have to take the other team once they make it to the title game. No, you're just saying, hey, they have a good season. We got a live 12 to 1 ticket. I love that distinction because that is what sports betting is all about. If you're doing this to truly make a profit, if you're watching these videos, if you're riding with the gold sheet, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to have a disposable income. Some people do it for their full-time jobs as well, and it's making smart bets at smart numbers. That's why I love that distinction. Yeah, do you want the longer ticket? Do you want to be able to say, I told you Pitt was going to win? Yeah, that would be great. However, um, you know, look, looking the smartest guy in the bar isn't necessarily the way to continue to build a bankroll. So great stuff from our man, Matt Josephs. He's also a contributor here with the football gold sheet that is dropping two weeks from today, NFL, college football, all of this information that you've been seeing and more, uh, just just the absolute value that the gold sheet is. Sure, it's going to tell you exactly what to place on, but it's also going to arm you with the tools to handicap yourself throughout the season. So I couldn't suggest it enough. It's a tool I use myself. So check it on out at wt.buzz slash gs. And we are going to have Matt Josephs with us back for another show. We're not done quite yet. We're going to talk some team totals uh, as long as season long goes. But if you have any questions for the college football guru, drop them below in the comments. We'll try and respond to them coming up this Thursday's edition where we do a little bit more of a grab bag, some season long props for you. But let's start off with some handicap. Uh, win totals, you know, the way that maybe you end up betting this because expectations versus reality are what I look at in season win totals. What is the team expected to do? And then whether the ticket cashes, whether it doesn't, it's a real chance for you to say, here's what I expect the team to do versus what the marketplace is. So, you know, we talked a lot about maybe some bets that we don't make as much. I feel like with the way that you handicap, Matt, and the way that you break down these teams heading into the year, Win totals is probably something you do add to your portfolio. Is is that fair in my assumption? Oh, yeah, certainly. And um, I full transparency because we're never 100% right. Last year, my largest play was the over on Army. I thought the schedule lined up perfectly for Army. I thought their offense was going to be a lot better, and it didn't. It did not work out. Uh, so, unfortunately, my largest play lost. And, and we had some smaller ones. Uh, one of the teams I'm going to recommend this year, they're over lost because they had a ton of injuries and couldn't uh, overcome it. So, it's not an exact science. But basically, what I do to kind of sit down is you take a look at a schedule. 
and, and you pick any sort of team and you look at how things lay out. And once again, it's kind of like the uh, the conference championship stuff. You want to look for scheduling spots. You want to see, is there three home games in a row? Is there a sandwich spot where you have two tough games and you have an easy game in the middle that you might lose because it's on the road and you're more focused on the other games? So what I kind of do is um, I, I do uh, a first-time run-through and I go and I do the win-loss, win-loss. And if there are games I'm not sure of, I give them a half. You know, if there's a, a road game that I think somebody's going to win uh, may, or, or might not win, I give them a half. And then I kind of look. I'm like, all right, so here's three sure wins. I've got four halves and I've got five losses. Well, this is kind of the number I'm looking at. And the key is for me, I didn't look at any of the Vegas numbers before putting all my numbers together because I don't want to get influenced, you know. When you look and see uh, if you go out there, and this is what I do for the Super Bowl also, for all the thousands of player props, I mentally go through the Super Bowl, and then I say, all right, this is what I'm thinking. Let me match it to what the props are. So if I don't know what the numbers are out there, then I could be way off on something, and they could be way off on something. So that's my first thing. And as we get closer to the season, chances are you probably have seen the numbers by now. But if you haven't and you want to dabble in this market, do your numbers first and then see mm -hmm. how they match up with what's out there. The other thing, and once again, it's a broken record, got to have different books. Uh, let's say uh, I love uh, Northern Illinois over five and a half. Okay, I, I think the Huskies have a really good team. I think that uh, injury-wise, they got ravaged last year. Rocky Lombardi is an above-average quarterback. Um, if they stay healthy, I think they can approach eight wins. So I did all my you know, things, and I went through all their schedule and everything, and I came up with about seven, eight wins. So then I went and I looked, and there's a really good page on another website that has all the sports books listed with all of the win totals and everything there. So let me read this off to you. Uh, FanDuel has the over 5.5 at minus 144, which is about the limit for what I will do. I'm not going to bet over minus 150s. I'm not betting minus mm -hmm. 160s, 170s, 180s. Like That's just not even worth it because you have to throw a lot of money to make it worth it. Yeah. Uh, BetMGM has over five and a half at minus 160. To me, that's too much. I don't know about you, Dan, but that's too much. Yeah. Uh, uh, Caesars has over five and a half at minus 161. So obviously there's a one penny difference there. It's still too much for me. And then here's the kicker. DraftKings has six and a half as their number. And the over and over is uh, plus 135. Now, while I'm projecting seven, eight wins for Northern Illinois, yeah. maybe you put like a quarter a of a unit tight. on over six and a half. I feel much better with over five and a half at minus 144 on FanDuel. And that's the key to having multiple sports books is you give Absolutely. yourself the opportunity to find it. And guess what, Dan? There's some teams that I've seen that have five and a half, six and six and a half, depending upon the book. And obviously that makes a big difference depending upon what your number is. Maybe you get a better yep. under or maybe you get a better over. So that, I can't stress that enough uh, to be able to give yourself multiple options, especially for a market like this. No, I, I couldn't agree more, Matt, and, and especially in a market like this, but even just the macro view of how to, uh, you know, make money when sports betting, if you don't have multiple outs, and I'm saying three is the bare minimum, uh, it's hard for me to say that you're actually serious about making money. Because it really is the difference. Ten cents of juice every now and then can be the difference when you're talking about razor thin margins of hitting above that 52, uh, you know, point whatever percent. Uh, you know, these razor razor thin margins having a difference in even just five cents of juice is is ultimately important. So I, I echo those sentiments completely. Have as many outs as you possibly can, and always take the best number okay sometimes it's a pain in the ass searching around you know you find what play you want and you have to go to seven different books to find which one has the lowest juice uh you know okay yeah it is a pain in the ass but it's a bigger pain in the ass being broke towards the end of the year because you let yourself take bad numbers all year long so completely echo those sentiments i mean what a terrific episode in less than half an hour matt we got people already ready on you know, five different markets and got them all kinds of actionable info. And that's what the gold sheet is all about. As I said, Matt will be back with us on Thursday. If you have any specific questions you want for him, drop them below in the comments. Make sure you hit a like and a subscribe for us here because the gold sheet TV is rocking through the entire season, getting you ready to go for college and NFL football. So appreciate you coming on. That's Matt Josephs. I'm Dan Alexander. We'll see you on Thursday. And don't go anywhere. Stay right here on Wager Talk TV and Gold Sheet TV for all the actionable info that you need. We'll see you next time.